Hi everybody. Um, I was in my studio this morning creating two uh, matching, well contrasting um, resin paintings for my home office. And I figured, you know, I'll take the opportunity to film the process. And I'm going to show you these products close up there, but I will be uh, sharing in my description what these products are. But so that you know, I'm using Pro Marine Clear Resin as my base, and then my products, my solutes that I'm going to be adding to the resin is, first of all, Mum's Millennium Tattoo Ink in uh, various blues, uh, Caribbean blue, Kentucky blue, grass, and, um, and then I'm also going to use Black Diamond pigment powder in Caribbean blue and I'm also going to use Mayron silver metallic uh, body powder and I was struggling for the other um, colors old blue eyes by Millennium um, tattoo ink so different but they will be in my description so these two wooden panels came from Dick Blick art supplies and they're 12 inch square. And you can see they're unprimed. Uh, this is the first time I've used them unprimed. I believe they're gonna be just fine because the wood is very good quality. So I'm laying down my first color, which is golden fluid acrylic paint. It's the only acrylic paint I'll be using. And this color is ultramarine blue. And I, I typically start my paintings by dividing my piece into thirds. Um, it seems that that gives some kind of complementary design, base design. So I'm laying down that original first color, which is golden fluid acrylic, ultramarine blue mixed in clear resin. The second colour is a Mum's Millennium and it's Caribbean Blue, which is quite a teal blue, turquoise blue. Um, I like that one a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm laying down tattoo ink in resin alongside golden fluid acrylic paint in resin. And I'm doing that very purposeful. I, I want the two products next to each other because every product, once it's in resin, is has its own unique properties. So it's good practice to take two different products in clear resin and put them next to each other because they will naturally have an interaction. And what I'm putting down right now is mica powder. It's black diamond pigment, Caribbean blue. So again, Acrylic paint to begin, followed by um, tattoo ink, followed by mica powder, which is that black diamond pigment in Caribbean blue. And tattoo ink can be a little bit hit and miss used in resin art. I would encourage you to use a quality tattoo ink, such as Mum's Millennium, which has a very dense pigment. And the color I'm putting down right now is a Mum's Millennium tattoo ink and the color is Kentucky Bluegrass. And it's very difficult to describe this blue. Uh, it's probably my favorite of the range. It's a very green blue. Um, and it has a lot of, it gives really nice effects. So I, I typically, although it's, it may appear random, I have a concept in my mind of how I want this to look. I typically don't torch my resin until I have good coverage of my panel because, and I have my base design down, because although once resin is mixed, it's activated, so it's going to become solid. By applying the heat gun or the blowtorch, to remove the bubbles etc you will speed up the activation too so 
I try to leave it without torching as long as possible so that I can keep the resin in a manipulative state. And I will be adding no um, additives like solvents, etc., or alcohol to this painting. So all the effects that you see towards the end of the video know that they're really created by technique, which you'll see my technique throughout the video, um, and also, but largely, the interaction of different mediums suspended in clear resin. <clears throat> and to explain that a little bit more for you, if you think of resin as your base medium and you, you bring ink, tattoo ink as it would be in this instance, mica powder, uh, fluid acrylic paint, all of those products are chemically very different. So when they're suspended into resin, they create a mixture that may be more dense, so the color may be sinking more to the bottom of the mixture, even though it appears to be throughout and well mixed. It may have more opacity. Um, some of the inks create a lot of opaque um, colors with lots of reflective qualities. And the mica powder, when it's mixed in, becomes very rich. But what I find, and I don't profess to be an expert, but what I found over the many years I've been doing this art form is anything that's a powder is likely to want to be at the surface. So if you, if you take Mayron silver powder, which I'm gonna put in towards the end, or mica powder, they, they're inclined to wanna to be at the surface because they have a very light um, weight. So when you put mica powder or any powder product in resin next to maybe paint or ink, it typically will come to the surface. So I'm going to be doing Mayron Silver, which is a very light powder. And I'm going to bring it in at the end, and you're going to be able to see what I mean. It's the components of it that actually manage to push on through, up through the ink and the paint, and become um, towards the surface are going to create some interesting effects in themselves with very little manipulation of, by me. And if you look at the top canvas, and let's think of it as being a clock face, if you look at from about 11.30 and you follow the eye right down to maybe 5 p.m., you'll see there's some like um, dots appearing along there. Those dots are ink, it's the Millennium Ink, and it's pushing up through the Golden Fluid Acrylic Paint. So those two are interacting already, and that's creating those, that dot effect, which I'm going to hope to retain during the painting and kind of maximize on those effects. So when I'm doing my resin art, I'm always looking at the wooden panel and trying to figure out, and I'm pointing that out there for you, and I, I'm trying to figure out what is happening naturally, organically on the piece. Because if I like it, I want to encourage it, and I certainly don't want to remove it. So here I am, and I'm, I'm just filling in with all my paint that's left a lot of um, making sure the canvas has a good coating. The other thing you're gonna see me do is when I mix all my colors, I always leave um, just a little bit, probably half an inch of clear resin because you can actually apply clear resin through the layers and that in itself will create effects. It creates a lot of um, light, refraction and um, it will encourage some of the kind of two components, maybe it's ink and mica powder or paint and mica powder, etc., to kind of stay apart and create an effect in itself. 
So I always add a little bit of clear resin, typically, to um, bring about some interesting effects in itself. So again, going for most of my products to be on the canvas. I don't typically change much until I have um, good coverage. And I have a Facebook group, Resin Art with Tina Kamala, on Facebook. It's a closed group, and if you are interested in joining us, um, we have some interesting artwork and artists on that page. And the group is open to all abilities. So right now, um, I'm using my gloved finger, and I'm tapping away and sometimes I'm sweeping a little bit. And what I'm trying to do is where two products have come into contact. I'm just tapping them so make sure they really are into full contact. I don't want to totally mix them, but I do want to encourage the interaction. So I'm tapping away now and I'm following the design that I'm trying to create. Now I'm doing the uh, canvas, uh, the wooden panel that's closest. I don't use um, typical artist canvas, uh, the gesso canvases you can purchase, because resin really, as it's curing, it expands and contracts. And um, I think that there's a high chance that you're, the canvas will either give or I've even heard of canvases ripping during that process. So I um, don't really like to take any chances, so I always purchase wooden panels. And once I have all my combination happening, I will be putting down some of the Mayron silver because I want silver to be quite a feature within these, this artwork. So once I have all my blue down, I'll be adding some silver. So this is the Mayron Silver Powder, mixed in resin. And I'm following the design, I'm applying with a popsicle stick. The quicker I can move across the panel, the finer the lines. The slower I go, the thicker the lines, the more application I get from the silver. But I do want silver to be a focus of these pieces, so I don't want to be too shy in the uh, quantity that I place. But you'll see I'm following the design because I want to retain that, that flow. What I'm trying in my, what the concept I have behind the piece is to have kind of a deep ocean movement with silver kind of surf. So um, that's what I'm going for.
and I will be blowtorching in a moment. And when I blowtorch, the viscosity will get thinner and the other products on the canvas will kind of come to the surface. There will be a lot of interaction. But the main one, because it's a powder, will always, to a degree, battle itself back to the surface. But that's what I want. And I want, I'm hoping that when it does come back to the surface, that it naturally fans out and creates some interesting effects. So I'm fanning, I'm um, sorry, I'm blowtorching the piece. And now the resin is warming up. It's becoming very active. And the viscosity is getting thinner. And the ink is going to battle a little bit with the mica powder. The mica powder is going to battle with the paint. Uh, the mayron is going to want to come to the surface because it's a powder. It's very light in its texture and some interesting effects will happen just by the application of heat. If I was to use an air blow, um, an air gun with hot air, which I do as well, um, I would risk dispersing out the design quite a lot. So I'm preferring to just use a blowtorch on these pieces. And I will come in and show you some close-ups at the end, but I'm already getting some interesting effects just from the application of heat. So I want to maximize on some of those effects. So I'm going to apply some clear resin where I want to uh, create some layering. So clear resin is going on top now anywhere where I feel I want to maximize some kind of interaction. And that will give a lot of an, an illusion of depth to the piece. Clear resin in and of itself can be a great um, tool for creating effects. And then once the clear resin is down, I will retorch the piece to continue some interaction. And the sides of this piece, I will, once it's cured, I will sand off any of the resin and um, I will probably paint them a complementary color like ultramarine blue. So I'm retorching after some clear resin. Now to push some of the components kind of apart again. I'm actually very excited being quite close to the piece. I'm really liking the, the design and the effects I'm creating. And I will come in and show you a close up towards the end.
And resin art has to be covered over because it's incredibly sticky and it'll be sticky for about at least eight hours. So if any dust, hair, particles are in the air in the room, which pretty much is guaranteed will be so, um, they will find their way to adhere to the painting. So they will be covered over. So before I cover them over, I kind of fold back the paper so that I have kind of a clean area around the piece. Um, I'm also wearing a face mask that's created for paint vapors. Um, so for this type of art, you have to wear a mask and look after your health. I also have extractor fans in my studio that basically recycle the air in my studio over and over. And while I'm folding back the paper, I'm keeping an eye on the piece because if there is any air bubbles, um, some of them take, you know, a minute or two to come to the surface. So I'm going to bring you in for a close-up. And as you can see, lots of effects are happening. The Mayron Silver Powder with the combination of a little clear resin has um, come to the surface and broken out and fanned out and created some interesting effects. There's a lot of depth, an illusion of depth. And that's because I've used various products alongside each other and they've competed to be at the surface and that in, a, in and of itself has created an illusion of depth. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm very happy with this piece. There's the there's mica powder and mayron powder there. And let's have a look at the other one. See it's the same palette but a little bit different. This one created some ink came up through the mica powder and became dotted. And then look at look at the uh, silver mayron there. Um, the torch was blowing at an angle and it made it fan out a little bit, created some interesting effects. And although while it's curing, it will continue to potentially change, it won't change a lot. It's pretty much, this is how it will be. I rarely get surprises after it's cured. But you can see the ink is battling up through. There's your Mayron powder. And it is really quite beautiful. And there you go. Ink battling its way up through mica powder. And some of that was created with that tapping effect of bringing the two, two, two or three um, different products close to each other, interacting. So I hope you enjoyed watching uh, this process. I will finish by doing a last torch, make sure I have all the bubbles. You can over torch and that will in, it, in itself create bubbles. So it is a fine line. Um, don't get too close with your blowtorch. Create heat to dissipate any of the air bubbles, but don't create uh, another problem by over torching. So here's some close ups. So overall, I'm very happy with this piece. I hope you've enjoyed watching my process and uh, please leave comments. I try to get to any questions you may have. 
So thanks guys, hope you enjoyed. Bye.